My concern, Mr. Speaker, listening to Honorable Geoffrey and to the Chairman of the uh, Committee of Education, is that I get more confused than more answers. Uh, Mr. Speaker, if, if I, as a member of parliament who is representing my constituency, is confused about this, how much more are my constituents going to be confused? Because if you listen to Honorable Geoffrey, you see so many challenges with this model. On the other hand, you are saying that it's, it's a better model and uh, more, more students are going to get access to education. But I just want to agree with Honorable Geoffrey that we must ensure that even where we say that, because what, what he said is the subsidy has been removed. And if subsidy has been removed, then it means there's a category of students that is going to take up all that, you know, that fee that they were not taking before. So in effect, it means the fee has been increased for that category of students. And so you will find that that category of students, most of them are going to drop off even the technical uh, courses. And for me, that is very worrisome because as a country, we need to be producing doctors, nurses, you know, specialized courses. But if you have a system that is going to exclude people, Mr. Speaker, that is a, a, a grave concern. Speaking as a lawyer, I also want to raise concerns over the use of certain terms very, uh, I don't want to say carelessly, but when you say we have the vulnerable, we have needy, we have less needy, sometimes I'm hearing extremely needy, so I don't know the categorizations, but even from that alone, I don't know which law, which is the legal framework that we are using to refer to that. And at this point, I wouldn't mind to be informed after I sit down so that you don't eat into my system. But is there a legal framework defining who is vulnerable? Because if there's no legal framework, then I can assure you if I had a child with corruption in this country, my child would be very vulnerable. In fact, I would even have an, add another adjective, I would say, extremely vulnerable. Because this is Kenya. This, we know what Kenya and corruption is. Corruption is our middle name as a country. And as much as we are saying we are committed to eradicating corruption, it will take us years. And so, Mr. Speaker, I think for me the issue is where is the legal framework? I'm also very concerned that even what the chair has agreed even with the Honorable Geoffrey, because of lack of public participation, most people are not aware of this talking as a member of parliament who represents a rural constituency. We even have a challenge getting people out to access bursary which is open. Everybody, almost everybody, let me say the constituency knows. During the time when I was campaigning, I found a young man who had got an A and had been admitted to University of Nairobi in a place called Usao in my constituency, which is sort of one of the farthest flung areas in my constituency. He had deferred his degree for one year, not aware that he could have come and asked for bursary in my constituency. Now you are telling this guy in Usao where there is no uh, 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 digital hub to go and get and use a hub, a computer hub to come and give information. Let us be realistic about the country we are living in. We have many people who things like computers sound like going to mass. So let us be realistic about the people that we are representing. Let us not operate as though we are representing people who live in Lovington, Kileleshua, and uh, Karen. We are representing people who live in uh, uh, Usao, in Sukuru, and Sikri in my constituency. There are people who will not access these uh, uh, systems very easily. The other issue is also the, on the issue of identity cards, which has also been raised by Honorable Geoffrey. If you are talking about border constituencies like my constituency, Getting normal identification is a problem. So it means, especially for people who are transiting from one system to another, that we will not be able to apply at all because we will not get IDs. It takes a year or two years even to get those IDs. So what are you telling uh, us, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, I think I'll leave it because my time is up, but I re uh, could I just request that we need a Kamkunji on this issue? so that you inform members of parliament first on this issue so that we can be better representatives. Thank you. Honorable Mili, just before you sit, I see you have a few seconds. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Tell me, I have, uh, you know, my eldest brother passed on. Now, my nephew, my nephew, immediate nephew, how do you consider his level of need to 
a son of some um, some peasant farmers who are over 80 or, or over 60 years old, not earning regular income. Uh, how would, um, or how in terms of your information, would their levels of need be categorized and defined? Mm. Mr. Speaker, that is actually my challenge. Because how you will classify a person as vulnerable, as needy, as extremely needy, and if you look at the number of people who are living below the poverty line, in this country almost 60% are extremely needy. So what we are basically saying is almost every or 70% will qualify for this. Are we actually being realistic about this? Because we are going to knock off people because of this. And the other thing is we are going to push it to members of parliament like you should see in our inboxes already, and I'm sure you are already facing it. People who are putting you in WhatsApp groups to collect uh, funds for, for school fees, and we can't afford it. And we, the mothers are panicking. There's a woman who keeps calling me from Bitter Town every day. She's called Lindsay. She calls me every day because she cannot afford fees for her child. And she's not the only one. There's one from Uganda. There's one from, I can count many of them. And chair, we are actually putting the country in crisis. This is something, and I want to thank Honorable Joffrey for raising this thing at this time. We need to deal with it as a matter of crisis. Thank you, chair. Thank you very much. The Honorable Gideon Kimayo, the Member of Parliament.